glad that you've chosen KTN News as your channel of choice to inform you on uh, matters, of course, economy this morning, where we're training our focus on. This is uh, Sokoni, eh, the economy, and uh, we primarily look at the current state of play on economic issues here in the country. My name is Dibala I trust that you slept easy, you've woken up well, and you're ready to face this good day. I'm joined this morning by Professor Exen Iraqi, who is the Associate Professor at the School of Business, University of Nairobi. Also be joined by Professor Gituro Wanaina, also a professor from the School of Business in University of Nairobi. Kiprono Kitoni, who is the chair of the Nairobi Security Exchange, and also will be joined by Bunyasi Sakwa, who is an economist, also a politician as well. And we're looking at a raft of issues right now. There is uh, that particular uh, notion that has been put out there that uh, KQ now is looking for an investor. What does it really portend for uh, the now beleaguered airline as far as uh, the economy is concerned? Also, we're trying to see what is uh, happening on that particular front after the pilot strike. Now, we're given to understand, according to the dailies this morning, that their salaries will be delayed in November because of a strike and that is a blowback of a strike as well. Still, inflation is rising around the world and people are tightening their belts. A big debate also today in Parliament is all about Iyala. What does it portend for us here in Kenya, uh, where we know we need to actually have some consummate uh, minds as far as uh, thrashing out issues on East Africa integration and federation is concerned at the Yala. And so people will be jostling already. We're given to understand MPs also are trying to cajole some of their members to vote for them as well. And we'll be looking at that this morning. And a lot of other issues as far as economy is concerned. So let's get the ball rolling this morning by looking at the dailies. We'll begin with the bold paper. And this is what is on the front page of the bold paper. MPs set stage for big clash with CJ Kome is what is headlining the front page of the standard this morning. CDF taps. All eyes will be on Attorney General Justin Muturi after the Treasury said it was ready, said it was ready to begin dispersing 2 billion shillings. No, that is NG CDF cash weekly. Subject to legal advice. How the AG decides could trigger the first major clash with the Supreme Court, which ruled that the fans is unconstitutional. And this story continues on page four of the standard this morning. And these are the faces that now are very pivotal in this process. Justin Muturi, who is the Attorney General. Also, we do have Martha Kome, Chief Justice. Jigunandongo, at the Treasury CS. And that story is well laid out for you on page four. And so we'll also be looking at the viability of this. They are really trying to push this, and the court declared that unconstitution. They say this uh, is not the NGCDF, which is a new act. That was an old act that the court declared itself uh, or declared it unconstitutional. But still, there are questions that were raised in that particular ruling about the MPs who are the patrons of this menace. And... Uh, this is where the bone of contention is as far as who is oversighting this particular money. Should they be actually uh, the preserve of the county governments at the end of the day? That we shall also be looking at. Bill Gates' mission in Kenya. Right, the billionaire is here in the country. He met with the president yesterday, as you can see here. Uh, president William Ruto with American tycoon Bill Gates at State House Nairobi yesterday. Both the president and the Microsoft founder agreed to collaborate in programs in security and universal health coverage. That story is well laid out for you inside the standard this morning. Also remember today you have the real estate pull magazine and shipping and logistics magazine magazine that comes in handy for you every Thursday. All the details about the real estate and how it's performing right now. Exodus to satellite towns up. Apps rental and land prices. Exodus to satellite towns, apps rental and land prices. Also, county plans to squeeze more revenue from Mombasa Port. County plans to squeeze more revenue from Mombasa Port. Read all the details inside the shipping and logistic pullout magazine today. Also, looking and on top there, the teaser petition to remove Chebukati never reached speaker. This is uh, the new revelation there. And Turukana oil sold for 426 million shillings. Turukana oil sold for 
426 million shillings. This is in the business pages of the standard this morning, page 22. You can follow that story. Also, powerful NASA rocket launched. That is on 27 of the standard. Friendly fire at the World Cup. Uh, the clock is tick talking towards the big event in Qatar. You can follow the story on page 46, 47, and 48 of the standard this morning. This is how it looks. Make sure you grab a copy of the bold paper. Moving on to Daily Nation. How Jubilee's 32 billion shillings laptop project flopped ahead of the 2013 general election. Then Jubilee Party candidates Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto promised to give each child who enrolled in school a laptop. On paper, it is well laid out initiative to turn children into digital citizens. But on the ground, things are dramatically different. And you have this story tucked away on page 7 of the Daily Nation this morning. Ten years later, the digital promise remains a dream for children. Uh, a scandal there. Don't we need answers? So that we know what will happen to the 32 billion shillings on the laptop project. I think also the president right now will be held responsible because this was under his administration. So we need answers also from the laptop uh, project that flopped and where this eye-popping money as well went as far as uh, the digital rollout is concerned for the children. Ruto set struck for Ayla and Kalonzo in Yala sits race. That is a story that you want to follow. Ahead of to today's vote for members of East Africa Legislative Assembly, President William Ruto's Kenya Kwanzaa is waiting in the wings to reap from a potential fallout in Azimio, where the nomination of a daughter and a son of a party of party leaders, Raila Odinga and Kalonzo Msioka, respectively, is causing an ease. And this story continues on page four and five of the Daily Nation this morning. Security. Special police units return in crackdown on gangs. New specialized police units are set for a comeback as the government moves to contain soaring crime in Nairobi, where armed gangs and pickpockets had turned certain parts into no-go zones. And that story is well laid out for you on page 5 of the Daily Nation this morning. You can follow that. Uh, the story of the tragedy that happened uh, yesterday. Six rescued, three die after building collapses. The two men and one woman didn't have to die. The National Construction Authority had closed the site only a day to the tragic incident, but the contractor continued building anyway. The height of, this is the height of impunity. You have this story tucked away on page 10 of the Daily Nation this morning. Let's move on. we we'll see what we have on the front page of the staff. Yala Hopeful's Hustle. MPs as voting looms. That is what we have on the front page of the staff. 28 candidates, members of two houses, cast their votes today from 9.30 and 10 a.m. And that story is tucked away on page 6. Beehive of activities as candidates held small kamukunjis with MPs let into last night. That story continues on page 6 of the staff this morning. On top here, unions fight over junior secondary placements. Billions at stake here. You can read all about it on page 4 and 5 of the Star and who visits displaced families in Eastern DRC. Also, tucked away here, you want to read about Justin Wamai from campaign debates into dusty construction sites is another story that you want to follow inside the Star this morning. Barely three months after... Failing to clinch the country's second in command post, former Roots Party presidential running mate Justina Wamai has gone back to pick up from where she left. The 35 year old mother of one is taking the bull by its horns in the male dominated construction industry. You can follow the story on page 9 of the Star this morning. Family planning young women on family planning pills still getting pregnant. This is a new study there. Most women report, uh, reporting unintended pregnancies in Nairobi are already using contraception pills. Are injection or injections uh, raising concern there is a high failure of these methods or they are being used incorrectly according to medics this you can follow it on page 20 of the star this morning also men on a mission we can see uh, their president Turu Kenyatta meeting displaced people in Goma East, Eastern near Congo and also KDF soldiers in Goma this is on the front page of the Star this very morning. Let's see what we have on the People Daily. 
Round Rocks House over City of Billions. And these are the faces. Professor Nduguna, Jung, uh, I should say, Ndungu from Treasury. Also, we have Justin Maturi, Attorney General, Kimani Shungwa, leader of majority. The National Treasury has no reason to delay further the release of the funds. Let them release all the money. This is Joe, what nominated MP John Mbadi was saying. And still, we have that controversy over the city of billions. Show us the money MPs want Kome Ndungu to be summoned over delays in releasing cash for constituencies and ruling that delayed that the, that and ruling that declare the fund unconstitutional or they won't pass supplementary budget. That story continues on page four of the people daily who will be going to yala that is a probing question intrigues galore as legislators vote today on nominees to represent kenya in regional parliament that story have it on page two of the people daily teachers unions big fight over junior high not once grade seven to nine to be in primary cupid says no secondary is best also gsu special units to take on criminals police adopt new strategy in war on crimes as route to host top security chiefs that is the people daily mahasla wamparuto masharti that is what we have on the front page of taifa leo wapinga mengi ya masharti ambayo serikali imetangaza yatatumika katika hazina za mahasla Excuse me And you can follow the story there matakwa ya mahasla all listed there for you hazina ya hasla wanaolengwa walalamika kuwa kanuni zilizowekwa huenda zisiwe na manufaa makubwa katika kuwasaidia kujiendeleza kibiashara na kilimo that is taifa leo and the hustle fans ruto agiza uda ya dhibu azimio yala that story continues on page 3 of taifa leo all right let's buckle down to some business kq to delay november pay after pilot strike hit sales that is a splash today workers uh, walkout cost the airline an estimated 1.2 billion shillings national carrier says it has suffered revenue dips you can follow the story on page two of the business daily elon musk tells twitter staff to work long hours or leave elon musk has told twitter staff that they must commit to working long hours at high intensity or else leave the company according to reports you can follow the story on page five and why competition agency grounded fly 540 operations the competition authority of kenya has halted operations of low-cost carrier fly 40 following increased traveler complaints including advertising with false information and cancellation of lines on short notice so buyer beware that is a caveat empty there that uh, it cannot right now be receiving any reservations on the seats uh, in regard to of course the upcoming holiday and how bond collateral system will work you can follow the story in september 2008 the central bank of kenya introduced a system where banks could borrow from one another on an emergency basis and address liquidity imbalances in the sector backed by government securities as collateral find all the details there on page 14. talos turkana oil production timelines slips once again that is on petroleum you can follow the story on page two of the business daily this morning Across the region, we have Daily Monitor in Uganda. Government releases new school calendar. Government says, it says that schools, or government says schools it ordered to prematurely close next Friday will, subject to Ebola virus disease prevalence, reopen for 2023-2024 academic year on February the 6th. Term 2 is slated to kick off on May 29th and end on August the 25th, while the third term is planned to open on september the 18th running until december the first this is happening in uganda with seven year points judges to supreme court of appeal and here are their faces these are the new judges and you can follow the story inside the daily monitor in uganda and sex workers accuse ngos of 
profiteering in their name. You can read all about it. And uh, this is happening in Uganda, just to remind you. And flat scale five in Kampala, Budim Bugio. That story continues on page three of the Daily Monitor in Uganda. In Tanzania, VP's 10 directives on water sources and climate change is what is a splash here. Follow all that, that story on page two. And Vice President uh, Philip Mpango has accused 10 directives as part of uh, wider efforts to protect water sources across the country and mitigate the adverse effects of climate change. That is what we have at the front page of the Citizen this morning. Morning is still in Tanzania. Kiama Chama the river. That is a splash. And we will continue, of course, giving you more of the stories much, much later in the course of the program. What is happening also on Financial Times and other dailies as well, and also looking at editorial cartoons this morning. Let's just uh, buckle down to our discussion here. I'll hack back now to what is on the front page of uh, the Standard this morning. MP sets stage for big clash with the Kome, and this is all about the CDF money, which way to go. Now they're saying, or they're threatening to stall the supplementary budget if this does not see the light of the day. I just want to introduce our panelists this morning. I'd introduce Professor uh, Exen Iraqi and Gituro Wanaina just to hear from them this morning. And also we're joined by Bunyasi Sakwa and uh, also Kiprono Kitoni. Good morning. Good morning. Prof, uh, welcome and uh, thank you for joining us. Yeah, maybe you are fresh. Uh, from, uh, of course, abroad, uh, Germany. You can tell us what is happening in Germany. I, I don't know who told you I was in Germany, but uh, it's a fact. An interesting country. <laughs> don't you know I'm a member of uh, NIS? <laughs> <laughs> You're from first, uh, an interesting country. <laughs> Probably not as capitalist as the US. Shops open at 10 a.m., close yes. at uh, 8 p.m. Know that 24 hour culture. But more interesting is to find kids who don't wear uniform when they are going to school. Yeah. And that's what you should probably introduce here, but we reduce the cost of schooling. <laughs> so we scrap uh, school yes. uniforms. Yes, in some schools you find the school uniform is as expensive as the school fees that they pay. Mm -hmm. And why do we assume that kids are, are the same by wearing uniform? They are different. Let them understand they are different right from the time they are children. Yeah, but we have some international schools here, no? and even not a private school, I think. Uh, why can't we adopt that to the public schools? But what, what was the reason for, for the school uniforms in the first place? It was about uniformity, so that uh, but the, the, the people who... But we are not uniform. Why do we want to be forced to be uniform? Even here, if you look at us, we are not uniform. You can see my partner, my friend is wearing the piece. I'm not wearing the piece. We are different. Mm -hmm. Are you telling us next time we should come wear a uniform in studio? <laughs> but they are not, we are not in school. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's a very interesting debate. <laughs> but before I go to my colleague, yeah, I'm surprised you are not, not, not talking about World Cup. Well, we'll go to, to World Cup. Of course, there's so many issues that have been raised uh, regarding World Cup, especially uh, the migrant workers who I'm have not, been I'm not, watch, I'm not watching World Cup this year until I find Kenya in World Cup. <laughs> that will be a long time. And then you never watch. <laughs> I, I will not watch World Cup for the rest until I find Kenya, even if it takes 10 years. Uh -huh. I will not even 15 years or 16. I will not watch. You don't watch it? Yes, until I see Kenyans in that World Cup. Well, we need to fix our issues here in the country. Geturo Wanaina, what do you think? Good morning. Good to see you. Morning. Good to see you, Oliva. Yes. I'm going to add to whatever Qatar uh -huh. to watch the World Cup against uh, my friends. But Trab is good to also good to see Kip for a long time. Uh, he looks taller than last time I found him. <laughs> <laughs> A you, need, you, need, you need to uh, adjust your seat at least. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a bit. There's a level there. The seat is broken. I think it, the, it is broken. I think the austerity measures in the standard group. They <laughs> <laughs> it shouldn't be here. Yeah. Austerity measures. Yes. <laughs> so it's a seat which uh, has a problem. Yes. Okay, I'm not aware about that. Yes. Right, good to see you though. Thank you. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, you. We're looking forward to, uh, of course, uh, uh, to engage in discussions on what is really happening with the climate change, especially uh, on the bones, uh, the, we can follow up on the COP26. Bunyas Isako, good to see you. Good morning. Thank you. Okay. Good morning. Yes. So what has been the highlight of the week uh, um, for yourself? This uh, runaway crime in communities and streets by the police, I think, has been quite worrisome in my view. Um, yet again, the challenge between the supremacy of parliament and uh, judiciary on stopping the vetting process. Yes. That should raise some interesting issues. And I think lastly, it's going to be the, the budget refocusing 
that is going to be quite controversial. Thank you. Thank you. Kituru uh, Wanaina, I just want us to begin from uh, what we have on the front page of the Daily Nation, all of Chile with the, the CDF, uh, which is very controversial. Now we have the legislators, uh, you know, uh, putting or uh, drawing their lines, uh, the line on the sand, in the sand, right. saying that uh, we will not pass the supplementary budget if the CDF does not uh, see the light of day. The court really declared that unconstitutional day uh, of the reason that, uh, you know, that was the first uh, act, it's not the new act, uh, that uh, the court declared itself uh, constitutional on. What What is your take on this? Yeah, <clears throat> thank you, Deba. And But also I think there's a very uh, sad story on this uh, building. Uh, we don't take a month these days without a building, days without a building collapsing. It's so sad when you get... Uh, three people dying because uh, our building was did follow the instructions. But coming to the issue of the, uh, the CDF, I think it's important to respect the law. If the National Assembly, if the members of parliament uh, think that uh, this is not the way to go, I think there are opportunities. I know it's went up to the Supreme Court, but there's a stuff in court uh, uh, to deal with it. But, but I think Putting a condition, we are not going to pass the supplementary budget, if this doesn't happen, I think that's something maybe the members of parliament need to really look. But the bottom line, and this has come out very strongly even when we had the campaigns, uh, the previous administration being really accused seriously for not uh, really following the law. I think we should set uh, the space very clearly uh, in terms of uh, following the law. But more importantly, it's logical in my view that uh, whatever goes to the counties is it, not fragmented. Mm -hmm. Because you have CDF here, you have what the Revenue Commission is uh, doing to the counties. If we can consolidate that, because at the, at the bottom line, we are targeting the same person uh, in terms of the county. You are targeting the same development projects. You are targeting the same. I think that harmonization needs to come into place. Mm -hmm. I, I, and if you could have one, you can even load what goes as the, the, the allocation to that. Yes. I think to me, you probably make uh, a lot. The way it's seen is like, if Iraq is a member of parliament, I'm the senator, I'm the governor. It's almost like three levels when you look at the CDF, which is going to the development that. That harmonization, uh, is, it, it, I think, is important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Uh, Iraqi. I'm surprised that, the, I'm not surprised that the MPs are so vocal about CDF which has been named NGCDF, I guess N is for national government. And they have good selfish reasons for doing that. Because that is a fact they control directly. Of course they not say that they control that fact, but they control it. So if you go to most constituencies, you'll find that an MP, sitting MP, has 20 CDF projects. A small project there, a small project there, because that's how you get popularity. That's how you get votes. That's why they are so passionate about it. But I agree with my colleague. Even senators want their FAD. There was even a proposal to have a word FAD, so that everybody who is erected has a FAD. It is interesting that we want everyone to have FADs, but they are all erected by the same people. So we seem to be failing in the concept of pooling. That money is more effective when it is pulled together. So I think MPs are breaking the rule. They are being unfair. They are being selfish. And we should not allow them to hold the government at ransom just because they cannot get what is outrolled by law. Mm -hmm. So they shouldn't. We should start our, farm, our ground and say the law was the judges pronounce themselves and they should not get their way. So Why are they not so vocal about other issues like drought or the economy not growing? Why don't they say we are not going to go to parliament until the economy grows at 10%? Why only when their money is involved? We should stop that selfishness. Right. Uh, Binyasi maybe can give us a, <laughs> maybe a bit of history to... where... It really began, the court uh, declared that the previous act unconstitutional. Isn't this also still reading uh, on that particular ruling? You'll find uh, the same same sentiments will apply on the N N NGCDF as well. Yeah, um, I, I think the, the substantive objection to the uh, CDF being run by uh, uh, at the constituency level with the members having some role uh, is based on the fundamental element in the Constitution that there will be a separation of powers between the executive and the legislature. 
and the purists on the, on the on that argument would argue that uh, if at any level you are involved in law making um, or any aspects of this judicial process you should not in any way again be involved in any aspects of implementation by the executive that's a that's a, an issue of jurisprudence now how which way it moves um, there are also secondary and i say there are secondary uh, issues around the use of CDF. I think there are outlandish constituencies, perhaps where MPs have uh, misdirected, but you know, it's also a testimony to the failure of the audit process in those constituencies. But having said that, the, the CDF as amended before, uh, when the NG was brought on, uh, narrowed the scope mm -hmm. of funding uh, principally to education, between bursaries and, school and infrastructure funding is probably 70% of that funding. <coughs> it allows support to infrastructure uh, facilities of the uh, administration and security forces, meaning provi old provincial administration, which like to, that's an easier word to, to use, mm -hmm. uh, as well as the police and uh, uh, those kinds of services. And it has an element of social protection, a uh, small, quite small elements of protection. Its management is about 6% of the amounts allocated, and that's tightly controlled. Uh, it can't exceed that the, the, the committee seatings and the staff that you hire, you're only allowed to hire five staff. Uh, you can't have six, they will not be paid. And then it's managed and run by, the, by committees, supported at the secret its secretariat by a full-time officer of the national uh, uh, board. Um, government has, um, relegated entirely the infrastructure facility construction to the CDF. And in some constituencies, some people are located better than worse. I had, I think I better use my own. Um, the, the, I had uh, 54 schools in the primary school system and about 30 second schools uh, at the peak of it. And uh, the support to these institutions is 90% perhaps more by CDF. National government uh, will, will provide in those 80 schools, uh, in my 10 years, they provided once some support in 15 second schools. Now, which means they come occasionally, you don't know which one they'll come to. Um, in fact, you don't even get good consultation. So the system would not run without those funds. Those funds do a good job, so to say. However, they do not overcome the fundamental issue that was there originally, and that's the area to focus on. I think what's going to happen in Parliament is that the threat not to pass the supplementary budget uh, will, that's my prediction, will finally uh, uh, be withdrawn. It will collapse uh, uh, after intense pressure and after they realize that uh, that supplementary budget Perhaps even the salaries of Parliament are locked in there, so they're not going to go that route for, for too long. But I think that it is going to lead to another round of consultations and maybe agreement with the judiciary on how the law should read to make it legal. I do not think that uh, neither, n neither the executive nor Parliament will proceed if, in fact, uh, the judicial, uh, uh, if the judgment is that it is. It's not in accordance with the law. I'm sure they'll find accommodation for doing that. Now, if there are any cases where the MP um, directly controls CDF, that would be usually that I don't know, uh, but there might there must be in 290 uh, points of expenditure. There may be variations. Uh, there may be people who are much more hands-on than they should be, but that that would be a surprise. They 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 could influence from the background, perhaps. Uh, I, uh, I, I see uh, sometimes you, you, you get school systems, particular school systems, which are completely in bad shape, but that's also because the money isn't, isn't enough. In my constituency, I said uh, my topic classrooms are okay. I had no difficulty with it because there is not enough to do everything at, at the same time. But I had a strategic plan in my first uh, sitting and a strategic plan in the second uh, term uh, to progressively upgrade this. And by the time I, I, I finished, there was no more topic classroom in my constituency. Mm -hmm. uh, so people normally pick the worst and <coughs> Excuse look me. at the money is not being, being used. I think if this had worked well with the ministry, 
from, from Nairobi, which I think is absolutely wrong. Uh, you can't go in my village, you know what's needed in my village from Nairobi. This probably ought to have been moved to county governments. If county governments would have had uh, transparent expenditure systems, uh, which are, is still a growing challenge, I don't know, maybe it's a reducing challenge, it's still a, a, grow, a, a, a growing uh, concern, as it, as it were. People are still concerned about the capacity of county governments to, to, to do these smaller projects across villages and so on. But in the, that's where the future lies. But ideally, but it should be with the counties, isn't it? That it should be with the counties. That's what I'm it saying. It should not it be should. Uh, with the, the place of, of, of yes, uh, of but it, should, it can't be handled in the same way. Say health services were devolved. You can't wake up one day and say, "From this, the hammer falls." Move. I think it is something that government must work systematically towards, and there are many ways in which they can do that that we can get into. But so about all the, uh, just before we go to Kiprono to just give us a broader overview as well, uh, not of course as a businessman, but just uh, you as a Kenyan and uh, looking at the CDF, I wanted us, I wanted you to make, make it very crystal for Kenyans. What is was unconstitutional about it with the first act that is diametrically different with the N, NGCDF right now? Uh, what was uh, uh, different was that uh, the. In the first act, the Consumer Development Fund, it didn't have that energy that was added, um, had um, uh, the, MP, the MP was a patron, uh, I think that's the word that was being used, to the fund. Uh, no, the MP was uh, more active in, in the selection of the committee. In fact, he was also an ex-official member uh, of the committee. He could sit in a committee and to still be a valid uh, pro uh, process of that, <coughs> of that particular sitting. The, he, that was removed. So the MP now doesn't sit on any of those committees, but he has a moral suasion over it. I think that's, what I, that's how I put it. Now they recognize the MP with the term patron. And as a patron, you, you aren't supposed to be activist in it. But of course, you're going to consult closely. And perhaps the pattern of, in, of uh, investment uh, uh, could be influenced by your intimacy uh, with the committee. Uh, it's that. Uh, uh, non-legal, non-substantive involvement, but it is substantive in its, in it, in its situation. It's like having, a, you would say, a head of state and this, uh, the budget outlook that he gets. Uh, they never sit on any committee, but of course that has reflected their priorities. And I think it's the same with MPs. As some MPs have um, uh, become MPs by, by seeking support on the basis of what they will do on a bridge there, what they will do on a road there. They don't do roads anymore. But funds come in from the uh, CARA, for example, the Kenya Rural Roads Authority, and they do influence for us uh, which roads are done. Uh, same to schools, where you put a new school, where you do a new re renovation, and that, that has been left a lot to the uh, uh, will of the individual MPs. But maybe that needs to be systematized in some way or another. All right. Uh, listening to Bunyasi Sako, have we got it very clear? I think he sounds like a politician. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Politics sort of drives the whole republic. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, in favor <laughs> maybe of, of uh, what is really on, uh, going, going on right now. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Debal. It's really nice to be here after several weeks and to <laughs> see some of uh, my old friends here, like Professor Hu, my old my teacher. Long time, my brother. Yeah, I yeah, know yeah, he yeah, looks yeah, younger than me, but he, <laughs> but he, <laughs> <laughs> he got to teach me some time back. Um, but the one thing, I'd like to say uh, three things by way of introduction. Uh, the first one being that, uh, you know, the, the whole conversation around CDF is not unusual. There's nothing new. It's the same old story. And I think one of the most uh, unique attributes of the human race is its ability to self-preserve. You know, when other creatures like the dinosaurs went into ex extinction in the Ice Age, the human race survived. So even for parliamentarians today, I mean, the CDF gives the incumbents a great competitive advantage over competitors. Mm -hmm. So it is not unusual that they would want to retain that uh, as a means of also enhancing their ability to self-preserve. Um, however, I also would like to say that uh, there are some merits to the CDF uh, being managed by members of parliament, because in many places in the country you've seen it actually, uh, you know, dictates development right at the grassroots level. However, now there, there's also the conversation that this is a, you know, could fall in the ambit of uh, county governments uh, under devolution. But uh, we, I, I'm, I'm just waiting to see um, how this uh, pans out. I don't hold uh, yeah, very strong views for or against. How, 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 However, let me just go to the next point. Uh, you know, I 
really also welcome the the short rains. Um, I think the last two years I've seen climate change actually come home to us in Kenya. Three weeks ago, I drove to Nanyuki, and I was shocked when we passed through Moranga and Nyeri. I haven't seen those parts of the country as dry as I did this year. And, and really, the impact of climate change is with us. So you see, uh, we really, it is a conversation that we must have. Actions must be taken today. We must look at our agricultural practice. We must look at how we are going to deal or mitigate the impact of climate change even without the funding that we are expecting from the West right. on the Climate Change Fund. I think we need to find our local solutions to this problem, which is a global problem. And, um, and finally, I, w I just want to say it's also very exciting that we've, ha we've seen the new government engage the private sector you know, in a whirlwind of activity over the last few weeks, and I'll speak about that uh, a little bit later. All right, thank you. And of, co of course, you'll highlight uh, to us uh, the president was at the Nairobi Security Exchange yeah. so far. Uh, what uh, was a salient point he raised uh, on the floor uh, during that particular uh, time that he came to you know, Nairobi Security Exchange. And uh, of course, we want to know from you, from your end as well, uh, as a winding up on the MPs uh, and the CDF fund. First of all, what was dramatically different with the Moe regime when we didn't have the CDF fund? Still, we had members of parliament and development was on the ground as well. No, so, uh, no, 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 let's take no it but it was the owners of the MPs not to push for the development to be in. Uh, that's a different <laughs> argument. That's what I'm saying. That's a different yeah, argument. Why, why can that really. The truth of the matter is that we have kept, uh, Kenya has kept pace largely in the education sector, in infrastructure because of the devolution of the fund. Now, having devolved the fund, and that's what nobody doubts, anybody who looks at it uh, objectively, just this, where do you place it? Because now you have got counties on the ground. The counties have only got a mandate for preschool, uh, is that preschool? Yeah, early childhood, yes. Early childhood, part yeah. of uh, education. Uh, perhaps the argument would have been that more is devolved to county governments, more of the education uh, section is devolved to gov county governments, and the budget goes with it. And then it will uh, 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 pull the rug from under uh, the, the parliamentarians, let's say, uh, if primary education was with county governments, and infrastructure funding goes with it, it will take away all this, uh, most of what we worry about here. But uh, uh, I think that there's no doubt that one of the gains, and I'm no longer a member of parliament, one of the most important uh, 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 gains that we have had has been in terms of efficiency of expenditure has been through the CDF fund. Uh, however, having said uh, all of this, that fundamental issue that we said in the separation of powers, and for many people it is, uh, it's, it's technical, almost esoteric, uh, that they do not, that's not a concept that people understand easily. And remember, it's not one that brings back MPs. In fact, if you are to analyze one single cause why MPs don't return is how they use CDF. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it can be an Achilles heel. Are you an example? Uh, <laughs> I decided to go for governor. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I graduated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, in my case, I think I must have graduated to want that seat right. because of how well I use my seat. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you don't, you can't move. I can assure you. You can't move. Oh. All right, uh, excellent Iraqi. I think I've uh, briefly. Well, let's one up on. I have two issues about CDF that probably should thrash out. The first one is the way we have become dependent on CDF. You want your kid to go to school? Bring CDF. You want something done at the constitutional level? Bring CDF. So I think that dependency should be done away with mm. so that people think about how they can empower themselves. Mm. So that you can depend less on CDF and you, you run your business, you, start a, you okay. get a profession. Because MPs and other people now want money so that they can, you can always go back to them. And number two, I think we are spending a lot of time on this forum talking about how we are going to share the money. Instead of going to go to CDF, to the national government, to the county government, <laughs> we'll be spending more time talking about how do we generate this money? Where does CDF money come from? And I think that's the debate we should be having here. Yeah, but even where the money is coming from and where the money is spent, <laughs> that is a pivotal issue because if you get this money, but uh, how it's spent on the ground, that is uh, also I, I think question. my concern is where that money comes from because you generate more of it. All right. Even, uh, uh, Professor, so do you foresee uh, this actually getting an advisory from you know, the courts again? Because it seems that uh, there's some grey issues that are not really well, uh, very limpid with the public or even with the legislators themselves as far as this fund is concerned. I, I think he has summarized here. And I think uh, to me it's very straightforward. We talk about economies of scale. If I bring these funds together to one 
point and I think uh, we should be over spot on. We can do more. Okay. And I, I don't see it uh, and I think I don't, I, I don't see it going forward as you say. Because one of the things we come with the supplementary budget is to affect the members of parliament. But so, there's so, a lot. So go ahead. Go, going forward, in terms of uh, be, them overseeing it or seeking, uh, I'm asking about just getting an opinion from the court again, advisory from the court. I, I think to me, it should still be done what the Supreme Court would. I think that's the right way to go. Uh, the moment that I'm a member of parliament, and therefore for me to get re elected, is this CDF. I, I find that argument perhaps not tenable. Mm. Perhaps it's how much can we do? And, and we find that when you go to the county, you find that you have three levels of quarreling. You find there's a governor, there's a senator, and the member of parliament. And even women, like, who serves at the end of the day? Is the development within that? It looks something like uh, uh, very clear health, devolved. And I see primary school perhaps in the next year being devolved. And there's no reason why we should be having primary school actually at the national level. It can't be bought to, to, the, to the county. Do you think the president uh, also was quick off the mark to speak about the CDF uh, when he just actually took reins and said, of course, we'll see the reinstallation of uh, this CDF. Uh, the court declared it, it's unconstitutional. That was, did the president... Uh, it's very difficult to follow this government. Uh, how is it going? I, I think for me, it's, it's well within his rights as a politician to pronounce himself on this matter. And it is a matter, I'm sure, uh, you know, having been in politics by, to, for close to 40 years, I'm sure it's a matter that he, or 35 years, it's a matter that he'd be very com competent to comment about. So, in my opinion, again, it's, uh, you know, it's political self-preservation. The president needs uh, parliament to pass the national budget. It needs, he needs the political support of the legislators. I mean, we saw what happened to the Jubilee administration for failing to engage with the political class. Uh, you know, there was basically a complete uh, political implosion. Um, arising from that. So I think what the president did is well within his rights. Mm -hmm. Yes, And he has been an MP, so he has <laughs> first hand experience. But I just want to add a quick thing. I think our debate should also be, national debate should also be on the, on, on the merits of devolution itself. Uh, should basic education be with the national government? Should it go to counties? If it goes to counties, it should go with the funding into the counties. Right. And you eliminate now uh, on basic education perhaps 50% of what, uh, what CDF is used on. The balance has been around bursaries and uh, high school, because it's a bit pyramidal. Uh, the, the, the basic, the primary is big, and then the second school is slightly smaller. But with 100% transition, the pyramid was beginning to balance upwards also. But then to, to, to put the money where the policy has gone. But if you retain this at the national level, and then you say, ah, no, but we can't give you CDF, we're going to give that to the ministry, for example, uh, to give it to the, uh, as, a, as, a, as a favor, <coughs> to give it to the counties, that won't work. It should be the domain of counties to fund these areas, to manage these areas, and the funds should go with it. It will take away uh, what now goes on. Maybe it will mutate into something else, but as it is now, that will be one way in which you can uh, uh, deal with the problem. But for this particular crisis, they will find an accommodation. They are not going to proceed against the will of the court. I think they will have to bring the court to a level where the court is reasonably comfortable. All right. Okay. Right. I think you're saying they will get a political solution. They will get a political solution to it. <laughs> All right. Let's just see uh, what will happen to it. I don't know. You're looking at Yala also is a big uh, day for the members of parliament. And uh, I want just to bring uh, Kiprono Kitoni to this as well. You also being the previous chair of the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce. People have been saying... You know, the, the government should consider, uh, especially looking at the nominees, people who have been in the, in the business sector uh, to this particular seats as well. Uh, because they, we are talking about, and the, the president is very big on, on integration with the East African community right now. Uh, I'm not saying in any way that, okay, they've not been given that sporting chance to showcase if they have the wherewithal and intellectual provenance to, uh, you know, apply themselves to some of... Uh, the issues that are arising within the East African community. But people who have business acumen should have stand a good state yeah, um, in being in these positions. <laughs> Debal, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, it's, it's quite unfortunate that we've seen again the political class uh, operate on the basis of expediency. Mm -hmm. um, if we look at uh, the candidates that have been put forward by the political parties for IALA, it is the same old story of rewarding you know, their loyal basis. 
and you know, rewarding those closest uh, to the center of power. It's got nothing to do with experience, it's got nothing to do with competence, it's got nothing to do with competitive advantage, Absolutely. and it's got nothing to do with the ability to represent our country at that very august house uh, that sits in Arusha. Uh, as you know, the East African community has been faced uh, with a lot of teething problems. Um, the non-tariff barriers continue to manifest. We are still a long way to realizing the lofty dreams of the uh, AFCFTA, African Continental Free Trade um, uh, Area, where we have a single Pan-African market with a free movement of goods, service, capital, and personnel across our <coughs> African states and, and capturing you know, the really huge uh, potential that exists in this continent. So when we look at uh, you know, two things, one, the personalities that have been put forward, and I am not in, in any way indicting them. Um, and we also look at the process. I think what even concerns me more is the process. I'm seeing we've seen the type of canvassing that is taking place uh, by these candidates with the parliamentarians. It really is, in my opinion, quite unfortunate because we don't see them. We don't, we, as a country, we don't end up putting our best foot forward. Mm -hmm. Let's look at Uganda, and we look at the candidates that Uganda has put forward. It is seasoned administrators, it is seasoned civil servants, it is politicians who, you know, perhaps, uh, you know, towards the end of their, their tenure in the main uh, parliament, it is business people of a high caliber. And I do believe myself that it is, it would have been very good to see at least a few of the business leaders of this country, people who've served right. this nation right. and, and really expanded our capacity to trade and, and to employ and etc. also being considered for this position. But again, same old story, we are seeing uh, parties are just rewarding themselves. We've seen even political party leaders trying to make it to that list who have failed in the last elections, and really that's quite unfortunate. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Sako, I thought maybe from uh, looking at your background, you as a seasoned consummate economist, uh, you'll actually be amongst uh, you know, people who are being fronted at uh, Yala. Yes, or I, does it, the, the, yes. did you, uh, the fact that you ran for governor disqualified you to... Yeah, no, technically. No, I, uh, no, no. I, I mean, if you follow through this rule, I should be on that list as well. You know, trying, to find, uh, <laughs> trying to find me accommodation. But it, it's not something in any way, shape or form that I was, I was searching. But you see, I come from... What would you consider? No, I have had uh, short-term priorities, so probably not now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, not now. Let me just leave it there for, uh, as it is. But I want to go back a bit, uh, uh, pass into history in, in a sense. But I want to discuss what I have lived as a Kenyan uh, from the early days of this, uh, uh, the debate around this African community. And it was, there was a time when, when it, it mattered, songs were composed that were very, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, liberating, some of them were quite emotional and uh, you know, so forth, trying, urging us to move towards the East African Federation, as it were. And it's something that people dreamt about. And they, so who went such an uh, institution, people would know, they would debate uh, their merits or demerits. But you see, this African community, uh, the economic union or federation that we are seeking, is now, in the, it's now very much in the background. Kenya has been part of the squabbling squad uh, at the community for a long time. Uh, and uh, their, their agreement, disagreement, particularly with Uganda uh, and Tanzania sometimes, will determine which way things are going to move. But now I think we're at a level at which we are looking at the economic potential. You have the DRC in there, South Sudan in there, uh, perhaps Somalia, perhaps another country will come in down the road. That it now ought to become part of the national debate in this country, um, with, with the East, Af East African Federation community. And therefore, who is going to best inter represent our interests? How have they performed? But as it is, it's something you just wake up and you find it in the, in, in the newspapers. There are some openings in the, in the assembly, and who shall we now take there? For what objective? That's, the objective is defined, but it's not part of our debate. It's not part of what we, we are concerned about. Until we get that back in the center, then who goes in will be on the spotlight, uh, and so on. But how they get in, the lobbying, Caprona uh, 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 here doesn't seem to be impressed with the lobbying, <laughs> but there must be some conversation uh, between the, uh, the electors and those seeking seeking office. It's not always, uh, you know, lobbying in Kenya is a dirty word because sometimes it's dirty. But lobbying in many countries is the way in which you express your views and preferences to those who are going to represent you, who are representing you. Uh, this in Kenya needs, needs to come a bit under a slightly different spotlight, uh, but there's nothing wrong with, 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 with the lobbying. Right. As I conclude, I think 
the debate around the, the need, the merits, and the potential for economic growth of the community is an important debate. That will be at the forefront. Then we shall ask, ask ourselves around the issues of tariff harmonization. Who understands tariff harmonization that we are sending there? Around the issues of infrastructure development, harmonized infrastructure development in this region. Uh, among the issues of ease of trade across this, who are the people who have some understanding on this, even if it's from a legislative perspective? Or what should be the other issues that we should worry about that we want to see at the committee, other than uh, to play a chess game uh, within the pond? So would you consider it to be a very axiomatic moment also for Azimio as it is today, uh, looking at the committees, especially the Parliamentary Service Co Committee that was very contentious for Azimio, for the ODM and the constituents mm -hmm. party within just uh, Azimio. Will this also be a make or break moment for Azimio? Will you, no, uh, no, you foresee an implosion? No, no, unfortunately it won't be. Uh, I think what it would, it would the, the areas uh, of tension. Unfortunately, yes. Uh, it won't be <laughs> because if it had been, they would pay a lot more attention to it. <laughs> it was still going to continue to be, do you take our person or do you take our person? Uh, and as I said, that without this ambient discussion, of the priorities for the region, I think is still uh, is still the old game. All right. Uh, let's hear from Professor. Uh, I'm, Iraqi. I'm loving this debate because if you look at the, the photos of the two people who want to join ERA, it looks more like uh, I wanted to be an engineer. Mm -hmm. I failed, mm -hmm. so I demand my kids should become engineers. Mm -hmm. So these faces are not very good for the political image of the people sponsoring them. But I think the bigger issue is why don't we vote for ERA members? I see people voting for European Union mm, members. Mm, so mm. what is wrong with us going to, when we go to vote for MP senators and so on, why can't we vote for members of East African Legislative Assembly? Assembly. It will right. not take us extra time. And we shall get the people we think can represent. It should not be the remit of the MPs to do that. No, it yeah. is not. We can do that. East Africa, if we can vote for a small person like MCA, why not member of East African Legislative Assembly? Mm. But I think if you look at the issues we deal with at East African community level, they are very big issues. So not everybody should be picked. There are issues beyond the county, beyond the world, beyond the country. So why are we getting picking, picking people randomly? And that's why voting would be the best. Mm -hmm. And the biggest problem we have in Kenya, and somebody alluded to that, is that devolution has drowned any integration issues. We spend so much time talking about, about devolution, the counties, the wards. We forget about the, the bigger picture, the East African community the African free trade here and the global issues. And I thought that this African community should have been a, a very good pilot project before we go to African free trade area. But now it's, it's about, about devolution. We have, see, see the amount of money we spend, the amount of time we spend here, or we spent here today talking about CDF. <laughs> Why don't we spend the same time talking about this African community, talking the, the, the about African free trade area? I get very annoyed when I go to Tanzania and I can pay in U.S. dollars, but I can't pay in Kenyan sharing. I think the spirit of East African community has been put at the back, at the back burner. We need to go back to it. Mm -hmm. And to, to me, East African community is the best catalyst of economic growth in this region. All right. Let's just uh, finalize on that with uh, Professor here, then we take a short break. And, uh... No, I think it has been dealt with. Uh, I just, <clears throat> I just uh, had a, a small tinge out. I think it was Tuesday to see... I think it was this Wine Odinga being uh, interviewed by Maura Waihiga. And uh, poor Waihiga, <laughs> I think he had read the interview uh, in the process. I, I'm not sure how he got what he wanted. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> as he pointed out, I think let's provide people who see the benefits of Kenya at that level and the region at, at large. And I think I really borrow his idea. Let's select these guys. Uh, I'll be happy somebody like Gatia <coughs> or, <coughs> or Kip who has been in the community, understands about the issue of the tariffs. We talked this last week very strongly. The trucks being on the border are held for hours. That's not business at all. Mm. So when you take, uh, and I think you can, this young fella, it's the it's son of Caronzo. This is the daughter of Raida. So what are you telling them on Inchi? We need what we did with the president. Getting somebody who grew up from learning chicken. Just get, get about these politicians. Let's get people who can actually push us forward in terms of this. A lot within the community we can benefit from. Mm -hmm. uh, but then the issue of the dollars, I think we discussed. Should forget about the dollars or the shillings when you go together. Use them as electronic money. That's all. You don't need those currencies anymore. All right.
Okay, we take a short break right now. When we circle back, of course, we continue with the discussion. We look a bit on what is happening with KQ right now, especially on the fact <laughs> that uh, they, most of the employees there will not be getting their salaries uh, in November because of the blowback of the strike that has cost the company around 1.2 billion shillings. Uh, they were losing 300 million shillings in a day, and that is the reality they have now to, of course, deal with. And, but what is the way forward? They're looking for a new investor. So what does it also portend on the stock markets it, itself?